Hi, Simon here, GM8NYV. Uh, pretty close to finishing well, the setup and the rebuild of the CR100. A few little cosmetic things to do. Um, I'm still on the top of here. There's two lights that go on it now that we're normal uh, filament lamps, but I'm going to use LEDs. I've tested an LED uh, screwing equivalent and uh, it's a 12 volt one but it works okay on the heater supply so I'm going to get two that fit in here and wire them up and that should uh, eliminate the dial there uh, together so there's that to do. I've put on the little plate here you can see I'll just move the cam okay I've, I've put the little plate over the vernier scale here it's on band one at the moment What I'm going to do now is just tune around the bands a little, see how it performs. Yesterday was probably had better conditions in the afternoon, but um, I think I should have made the video yesterday. Well, I'm not sure what the conditions are today. I've got it connected up to my doublet. It's up at 15 meters. It's cut for a top band, 160 meters. Uh, it's on three masts and it's fed with 450 on window line. And I've got it directly into the dipole input on this CL100. Now then, uh, on the lower frequency sides, down to 60 hertz here to 160, uh, you get a lot of uh, man-made noise, things from switch mode power supplies and some electronic devices. So I've gone around and switched off as many as I can. So I'm in a living area where it's quite quiet. I'm uh, quite fortunate in that respect. Uh, Radio-wise, interference-wise, it's quite quiet. So well, uh, it's been switched off about uh, half an hour now. Uh, the H T is off, but the heaters have been on for about half an hour, hopefully to stabilise it. Still got to do the, after this, do the casing and the front panel, which uh, is the next job here, a front panel, so it's on like that. Um, and these uh, bezels go over the windows, there's one for the middle here. So that's the next job. But first I'll have a quick tune around and see how it performs. Okay, that's it uh, switched on and just turn the H gain up a little. Uh, this range is 60 kilohertz to 160 and it's range 1. Put the BFO on. There is a carrier there, not sure it's. So there's uh, some weird and wonderful uh, stations on this band. Uh, very low frequency, uh, lower than a long wave. And uh, I did, a few days ago, I picked up a couple of beacons and one was from Wick, uh, sends its call sign in Morse and the other one was in Vaness and one from, uh, I think, the Orkneys. I'm not sure if we'll get them today, we'll see. So I'll just quickly tune around and see. A lot of crackles and just pick up. Pulse noise. Now I've gone up to 160 kilohertz there. Right, that's band one, range one. Change over to range two, which runs from 160 kilohertz to um, 500 or 450, I think. So this is basically round out the long wave on the old radios. I'll just peek in the area up as we go. Around about 250 kilohertz, not sure what the signal is. A lot of fading on that one. 230 kilohertz ish. Put that up to uh, 6 kilohertz bandwidth for the filter, get better audio for. Slightly off. What is it about? What you, what we, 100 and I think it's 198 is supposed to be. But even though I tune the band ends up 160 and say 400 on this, the the points 
aren't exactly on uh, each one of these. I think I said it in one of the other uh, videos I made. Marconi made these scales to suit the actual radio that uh, it was going on. So they got the ad bands in, and then they used a crystal marker and had a dummy scale, marked the frequencies with a crystal marker, and then made the scale to fit. I didn't want to redo the scale on this because I like the, uh, the authenticity of the original scale. I uh, may do one day just to see, but uh, I think I'll just leave it as it is. So that's probably Radio 4. Right, here we go. That's more or less band 2. That's that, that's 160, which is the top end range one. There's a station there. Right, we'll go to band 3. Which is roughly the old medium wave. So this is the old medium wave, or AM as people used to call it. Although it's an AM receiver. I'll skip through here. It's not bad the band is tonight, it's what, it's four, it's quarters eight now. This is quarter eight at night, so. Bit overloaded on that station. Oh, that man. I didn't realise there were still so many stations on the uh, this band. Well, that's the uh, the end of range three. We've got to range four. One point four megs to four megs. So. Lot of, you know, we're in the short waves now. That's 80 meter amateur band. Doesn't have a product detector, so we use the BFO. Oh, yeah, I'll put the uh, bandwidth down to 3000 ah, kilohertz. <laughs> Sounds like a German one there. So that's the 80 meter yeah, amateur band. Um, resolved with the BFO, but it's very tight. As I say, I've seen some of these uh, with product detectors in, and like an additional uh, add-on, so they can uh, resolve the single sideband better. But uh, I don't think I'll go that far. Another thing is, that's 3.5 to 3.8, the amateur band is very uh, squashed in a little space there. I not find any Morse. It's good for Morse. Right. Carry on down to the other end. Not a lot here. A lot of noises. I've come to the top end of the AM band. That's the end of the uh, band four. Snip up to band five. So this is four megs to eleven megs. Funny signals on here. RTTY. Round about uh, four point six megs. That sounds like RTTY. Anyway.
I think that's a beacon. Nope. That's the pulsing thing. Right, that's Volmet. I see. Volmet uh, weather forecasts or weather services for uh, aeronautical. Uh, coming into the 49 meter broadcast bands on the short wave. Yeah, it seems the strong stations do overload it, even with the with the ABC on. Which um, uh, I need to investigate why that is. Now we come on to the 40 meter amateur band, which on this is very narrow. BFO's a little squeaky as well. You may have noticed there's still some backlash on the uh, on the dial there. Um, I just slacken this off originally, it was too much, but it's still a little there, but I don't want to do it again. You see that it just jumps back there. Anyway, there's a 40 meter amateur band. No, I can't hear the reply. Anyway, take the BFO off and we'll carry on. So we're coming to the end of the range five. This is coming to the end of range five. Now I'll nip up to range six, which runs from 11 megs to 30. We'll start at the 30 megs at the end. Can't see there being much open on these higher frequencies today. You never know sometimes. This is 10 meter amateur band. Very quiet at this point. Yeah, the band's quite quiet. This high up broadcast band's coming in again. Yeah. Well, there we go, we get to the end of the range six band now. Anyway, there we go, that's uh, basically it um, completed. Just need to do the case and the front panel. Right, I've taken all the uh, these knobs off just so I can put the front panel on, see what it looks like. That wanted the, the bolt to the main box at all. That would sit like that. That's not too bad. So there you see it. This is the hole here was 
obviously drilled extra it was uh, says noise limiter I think I just indicates where the noise limiter is on the inside now someone obviously drilled through the noise limiter and they bolted the, the switch on of course no none of the controls were ever bolted to the panel so that was the idea I think was to open it it's not very convenient really to the RIS which was a pot for the radar interference suppression I'm not I'm leaving that off I may put someone else in there the extra components I'm leaving out of this one and may not be quite authentic for the model but uh, I'm not likely to ever have to use the uh, radar interference suppression and the little box went on here uh, which I'll put back this hole I think I will fill in uh, smooth one out I'm going to take all the paint off and I'll fill that in make it all smooth this I'll use for something else and then I shall use some screen printing technique to get all the lettering back on in the right place. So that's it. So not too bad. There's the scale showing through. So the next plan now is to do up the case. One of the things to do want to do on the receiver is go through the specifications and see how close it is. They do a detune test and also a sensitivity test, which I may do uh, in the next weeks or so. Right, thanks for watching and uh, taking almost a year, is it October, I think I started it uh, in earnest last November, although I've had the radio a few months before that, so uh, a year and a quarter I've had this radio from uh, my friend and uh, the last few months I've not really done much to it, I have spent much time on it, um, been uh, occupied with other things but there we go hope to get it finished very soon uh, next thing is practice screen printing but i hope that uh, was interesting and um, i'll catch you next time bye bye